So, Lawrence, what's the issue around big data that the government of Canada is trying to address? Well, big data has a, a huge potential value for how government does things, from policy development to evaluating our programs to uh, interacting with citizens. And so, the the main challenges are to try to figure out the best way to lever that data in the public good, but to do so in a way that recognizes that government has a very specific responsibility for the privacy of, of citizens and the stewardship of the data that they that they possess and so I don't you know it does not have to be a zero-sum game where we can sort of either derive the benefits of big data or, or protect privacy we can do both of those things but the challenge is going to be is to find the best ways to do that so that we so that we derive the benefits of big data in terms of the services that can be provided to citizens and the effectiveness of our programs without compromising legitimate rights, privacy rights of individual Canadians. This must mean uh, huge implications for how we do our business in government. Absolutely, and it also um, requires some new skill sets and some new talents that to, to, to be part of, of the public service. These are unique and important skills to be able to do the kind of work associated with a analytics of big data, visualizing big data, um, making it effective and useful. So yeah, it's a, it's a new way of doing things and it involves some new skill sets. So what are some of the initiatives you're undertaking in this area? Well, various departments are, un are I think, are, are um, you know, at various stages of using data. And I, you know, would, would not say I'd, I'd be, uh, have expertise in terms of what individual departments are doing, but I think some of the things they are looking at is, um, you know, for, for example, trying to understand the effectiveness of some of their programming, how, 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 it's, how it's being, uh, uh, it's, its overall effectiveness, working with um, being able to risk manage better, understand potential risks more effectively. I would say everybody are in fairly early stages of doing this now, and part of what has to be looked at is, again, you know, to do some of these things, you do have to make sure your uh, have the safeguards in place to do it properly and legitimately and you know departments are rightly are rightfully going to be very careful in trying to pursue big data objectives while still respecting those and it would seem to me those issues would be much more difficult for some departments than others just because of the nature of their business is that a fair way to put it? I think well I mean I think especially particularly sensitive information right so and 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 you know my impression would just be on its face for example health data right that's going to be particularly sensitive and so forth so yeah there's I think the changes will be will be different the challenges will be different sort of cutting across departments and let's be clear, when you are talking about big data and the use of big data within government, you are not talking about open data. That is to say, the releasing of information to Canadians in order to leverage it. Is that correct? That's right. There is a distinction between the open data is very, very important because it is, it in fact, allows for a broader use of this data for kind of big data purposes for other people. So, you know, we, I would sort of, if a metaphor for this would be, you know, op open data is kind of the gasoline for the engine of big data. Can you give me an example of how you would predict a policy analyst in any given department would be able to leverage, use big data in order to do the job better? Well, I think if you had, so for example, for program effectiveness, if you were able to, let's say, you know, programs we operate where, um, you know, lots of client interviews or follow-up, trying to understand how the program works. Oftentimes, that's recorded now in handwritten notes and so forth, right? And, and uh, in, in, in days, in past days, those kind of, that would have kind of just been in notebooks, maybe used, maybe consulted, but now with things like textual analysis and so on, you know, you could really get a profile for how effective the program is working. You could say, you know, we talked to various firms about their experiences and these kind of concepts and so on, you know, popped up, and it would just open up whole new ways of trying to understand how programs work. Is this a capacity issue or from an IT point of view? Are you going to get pressure or concerns from the CIOs about what this means in terms of moving huge amounts of information back and forth? Yeah, I mean, I think there are going to, obviously, there, there's going to, to do this over time. It will require infrastructure, it will require people. Mind you, one of the things that does make big data analytics possible in the first place is kind of just continuing decline in the costs of, of computing, of data storage, of networking, etc. So, yeah, I'm not going to pretend those aren't going to be issues. They certainly, they certainly will be. But um, some of the, it's like anything else, I think part of it is going to be sort of to road test things, to try a few things and see the benefits that can be derived from them. And then maybe in that way it becomes demonstrably why, 
evident why it's useful to make those kind of investments. You mentioned at least twice about the, <coughs> pardon me, about the uh, issues around privacy. What are you doing about that? What has to be put in place in order to make uh, big data usable? Well, I think part of it is, you know, we have, we have responsibilities both in the private and the public sector. So the government is already looking to strengthen um, its private sector uh, privacy legislation by introducing things like, for, among other things, data breach requirements, etc. Internally, we also will have to look at various departmental statutes and the Privacy Act, and there is 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 really a range of statutes that would need to be looked at if this was going to be sort of widespread use. And are you is Industry Canada leading that process? What exactly is the role of Industry Canada in this whole? I I wouldn't say we're kind of leading or directing a kind of a process. I think what happens is because of our sort of function on within the IT community, like in terms of responsibilities related for looking at the IT sector, for the fact that we do or you know use a lot of data, um, we have certain kind of you know just a community of interest involved in Industry Canada. So it's not um, some sort of formal. You know, industry Canada is the government Canada lead on big data or anything like that. It's just more we are trying to sort of do some analysis and be a bit of a convener on these issues. So, in your uh, happy moments, what's the outcome that you would like to see, and and when? And can it be framed in that language? Uh, yeah, the when's probably more. I think what I'd like to see is a few really good examples and pilots that we can build on, and where, where we can learn some lessons. And uh, over time, I'd like to see this sort of try to, you know, find ways where we can actually demonstrably say, look, we've used big data here, we've been able to do something new, this has opened up new possibilities. And I think that's the thing. This is this is happening very fast. Um, you know, I don't think there's going to be just one grand solution here. I'd like to see, like most things, some good incremental achievements to sort on which we can build. Is there pushback? Um, I, th I would say it, there's not so much pushback as, 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 as legitimate caution, right, about how we use this information. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks.